Welcome back to the Red Booth Show. I'm here with bassist Bjorn England. So, and you were just talking about how much it changed the scene, uh, the music scene, when uh, grunge sort of took over here in the U.S. But then also in Germany and in other countries, and you know, mm -hmm. Asia and and Mexico, and they were still rocking out with all of this stuff. So then mm -hmm. there were still bands becoming really big, just not in the U.S. during that time. Yeah, and and I I feel like. U.S. still hasn't recovered fully. And I don't know if it ever will, because it kind of killed something culturally that was very strong. It kind of just wiped it out. And it's really hard to build from that. When that is just gone, they just took all that, all the 80s bands were just like, okay, but none the, of you guys are worthy. But we still love all that music, though. Very That's true. the thing, is that doesn't make sense. Absolutely. I think, you know, tons of people really rock out to that same kind of music. 100%. Like you call it hair band yeah. music, right? Or whatever. Right. Maybe it was just like the um, the clothing and the out and the and the stuff, like the 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 way that they appeared or something that became I mean th there was a lot of bands that to me looked and sounded the same a lot and yeah. I wasn't a huge fan of, of 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 many of them. But there was also really a lot of quality really strong strong bands like extreme and badlands and mr big and you know white lion and yeah. were very good and played very well and wrote really good songs and they had they had a unique sound so then the, but then you had about 20 25 bands that were yeah yeah so that i think that's what killed it i gotta be honest it was too got diluted a little bit however you want to put it yeah. So, I mean, but I think anything is going to be like that. You can only have so many really unique artists. I mean, how many Led Zeppelins are there or Black Sabbaths? I mean, it's... Yeah. So, uh And even, tough. I mean, Black Sabbaths, to this day, people still love Black Sabbath. And, right. You know, th this, mm -hmm. kind, this kind of music does carry through time. Absolutely. I think it's just... Honestly, I feel like it was yeah. fashion. It was a fashion thing. Because fashion yeah. is so fickle, mm -hmm. especially in the U.S., well, it was, and, 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 you know, like you had, of course, a lot of bands went with the times and changed or whatever and whatnot, and, you know, even Iron Maiden and Judas Priest did it, where they incorporated, like, you know, synthesizer sounds with their guitars and stuff like that and pedals to, you know, but they still, you know, they were so classic and so unique and on another level. Yeah. Uh, that they, they were untouchable, like yeah. Van Halen. I mean, you're not going to... Yeah. Record label's not going to, like, dump them because they're just too big. So, um, you know. But, yeah, it's... it's well. uh, you know, and Iron Man's a great example. I mean, you know, who plays in front of 500,000 people, you know, and has their own 757 airplane and stuff like that. They so have their own cool. 757? Yes. What? Have you been in it? I have not, no. Or you just heard about it? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I guess Metallica just came out with a new album. So, I mean, like, like they're a heavy metal right, right. band, and they're, yeah. they're, they're trying to bring it back. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you, you know, some, if you, when you're at a certain level, I mean, you know, you're not going to just die. And you have a lot of fans and stuff like that. Yeah. You definitely keep going as long as you want. That's as long cool. as you have the energy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they're a good example, but I'm just, you know, kind of excited because, yeah. I mean, I do think that that kind of music is really fun to listen to, and it just is great that there's more mm -hmm. coming out. Yeah. Like, like your, your new band that you're, well, your band, it's not new, but mm -hmm. you've sort of like revamped uh, it in a, in a new way. Yeah. Yeah. We did, and we, we have an album out since before, which is with a different lineup, and uh, now we're a little bit more back to the uh, roots of melodic metal as opposed to, you know, we're maybe a little more, I don't know, what, what would you call it, like uh, bluesy or even maybe a little Queensryche audio slave kind of influenced. And we're still kind of a little bit like that, but more maybe along the lines of maybe, you know, Iron Maiden and maybe cool. Judas Priest and things like that. So Awesome. Yeah. That'll be cool. So yeah. people should definitely go check out this band. And... Um, also, you played with Ingve, so you have been doing other bands and touring with other bands as mm -hmm. well. Can you tell us a bit about that too? Uh, about Ingve, my time with Ingve Malmsteen. Um, it, you know, it was interesting. I, as a kid, always wanted to play with him, and, and it was kind of like a dream. And uh, I'd have his records on the wall, and and I'd learn some of his songs when I was 15 years old by myself. Wow! You know, just that's really by, hard by to ear. do that. It kind of, yeah. <laughs> You just have to move the needle and, what was that again? What was that? You know, and eventually you get it kind of right. 
close enough. And uh, learned a lot from that. So when, when I finally got the call, um, I, I think I, I, it went from being a dream to like, I just had a feeling I'd play with him one day. But I didn't know when, because I was like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm the right, probably right bass player for him. So I got to know, became friends with his drummer at the time. And one day I get a call and say, hey, we need a, <laughs> we're going to play at the NAMM show. And, you know, at the Fender stage, and we need a bass player. No rehearsal, nothing. Can you do it? I'm like, wow. Okay. So I did. And oh, my God. That was a weird audition. Audition, you know, like, yeah. learn 10 songs, show up and play. That's it. And you got 2,000 musicians like this, you know. How much time did you have to prepare? I had a, maybe almost two weeks. And I knew a couple of the songs from before, since I was a kid, maybe one or two. That's good. But the other ones I had to, I was, I was watching live videos and I was watching different versions of this is, this is the version we're going to play. So I try to, you know, nail as much as I could. Wow, that's so crazy. Yeah. And you did it. I did it. And then right away he asked me if I wanted to tour with him. So that was cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, we have to take a quick break. Okay. But we'll be right back with Bjorn England. Hey, I'm talking with Bjorn England. Keep watching the rest of our interview by clicking here.